100 years later. The Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later. Galveston is 37 miles all the way around. We are the piece of land that actually stops a hurricane from being massive at the oil refineries just on the other side of Galveston Bay. So we are a necessary evil, you know. Um, but we're beautiful. This weekend is Martin Luther King's birthday. It's the celebration of the life of Dr. King. Galveston, uh, Galveston is an island off the coast of Texas. You know, we're set aside from the rest of the world. About uh, two to three weeks later, we finally came back to the island. And the neighbors came over, they were like, yeah, your house burned down. Everything that I had, it was gone. The blanket that my great-grandmother made me, the pictures of my uh, grandparents, the pictures of my ancestors, they were all burned up in the fire. Everything was gone. Yeah, I haven't been to this place since Ike hit, so. Uh, it brings back a lot of memories, you know. It, like I said earlier, it's kind of like an eerie feeling because we rode it out in this place and, yeah. People that you may see in the grocery store that you've never spoken to, you spoke to them during that time or, or they helped you during that time, you know. Uh, the rebuilding process, it, some people, a lot of people still rebuilding. Uh, Ike impacted Galveston in a lot of ways, as far as population wise. Uh, a lot of people left. A lot of people left, and a lot of people don't want to come back. A lot of people left, and they can't come back. September 13, 2008, everybody was on a level playing field because we all were devastated by Hurricane Ike. 75% of the island was flooded and everybody lost a lot. And everybody was in the same boat because it didn't make any difference how much money you had. You couldn't buy groceries, you couldn't buy gas, you couldn't flush your toilet. So we all were even on this island. The further and further away you get from September 13, 2008, the more of the separation of power you see. Good morning, everyone. I am here to do a reflection on justice. And just as the prior speaker, uh, the prior minister came before me and said that we cannot exist without light. A society cannot exist without justice. Dr. King, whom we honor on this day, a modern day prophet of God stated he desired his legacy to remember him as a drum major for justice. Justice was at the heart of his agenda that was targeted to attack the three evils. Here's honesty. No matter how it comes, they're always going to be the individuals who feel the brunt of it. I don't know whether uh, I do know. I do know that society makes it that way. Um, society, it, it, we're set up for failure. I was six years old when we lived here and it was public housing. 
and we lived in a unit right up in this area right here. Totally different than what these are. Never thought that I would see public housing like this. I think uh, deep down inside, I think they're deterring people from returning. I honestly do. They're deterring people from, from coming back because there was a lot of violence with these projects. People getting killed and stuff and uh, drugs and everything. I think I kept them out big time. I kept them out. Why is that? There's nothing here now. It's totally different. And that's why I say I think I kept those out who didn't want these places here. Everything was gone. That made me, now that I think about it, it made me appreciate the things that I have right now because that lets me know that if another hurricane comes, I know that I have something that I can remember. My dream for the world, of, my dream for the future of our world and its people. The melodic sounds of Louis Armstrong singing What a Wonderful World conjures visions of people living in a world immersed in tranquility. My dream for the future of our world and its people is for people to realize that there is one race, the human race. In order to achieve that goal, there must be a focus on... Culture. We're an island. There is nothing we can do about what's happening with water. The more the Arctic melts, the more water we're going to have to fight off. When I hit, it really opened my eyes because it wasn't the wind that destroyed the island, it was the water that destroyed the island. And the water, that was the highest water we've ever had here. It's inevitable, you know, that uh, 100 years from now, Galveston Island may not be here. It may be that the warnings that are being given will at some point hit on ears that understand who are in a powerful enough position to do something about it. This is my dream to come true. Thank you. Thank you.